Before we start, let's just go over a few basic things about Kato polymer clay. Number one, it is an oven hardening clay, but that's not to say it can't be used in its uh, raw unbaked form, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, the second thing is, is that it does need to be conditioned and rolled through the pasta machine, you know, warmed up condition, rolled through the pasta machine to be able to use it in this, with this method, except for um, um, when using it for collaging um, or uh, multimedia pieces. You're also going to need some additional materials. I would highly suggest that um, you um, get your hands on some aluminum foil. Um, it's, it's cheap and it makes great armatures. I would also suggest, you know, recycled um, cardboard box, which would make good, great backing. Um, it beaters, if you want to get some, um, what is it, the wood bead, the wooden beads that you see. I've seen it all over YouTube. Wood beads, something that you can make a form with. The other things besides scissors and cutting cutting tools is that you definitely need to get your hands on some tight bond quick and thick because that's what we're going to be using to seal the clay. Um, the third thing is you're going to be needing something to uh, use as a gloss. Um, I highly suggest art resin, reason being it's not only water resistant, it's also UV protective and anti-yellowing. So it makes a really great finishing gloss. Something else you might want to consider is matte mediums. That's basically for all my collaging artists or multimedia artists. So my aim is to do a few tutorials. I'm going to try and cover as many different uh, applications of Kato polymer clay for you. And um, so keep the basics and also the new materials that you will require in mind. Raw. Welcome to episode one, Jewelers, this is for you. We're making beads today and I'm starting off with my tin foil armatures and we're gonna to add to it a uh, scrapped Kato polymer clay sheet that I rolled out in a medium thin setting and we're going to seal it with tight bond quick and thick. And as you can see the, the blue one that I've made, um, this is prior to finishing it off with art resin but um, it looks great. It's a little bit there's a little bit of a shine. Um, don't let that fool you. It still has to be finished and we you know squeezing it um, it doesn't squish down. It's actually very good. Haven't baked it, not gonna bake it. And we've got a skewer in it to get it set up for the finishing process. So buckle up, here we go.
All right, the magic is about to happen because we're not going to use the oven. We're going to seal it with a tight bond, quick and thick. And um, once I, I tend to just squeeze it down in a, a scrap cardboard so that it's handy, but you have to really be very fast about when you apply the uh, the quick and thick to um, to your bead because it dries so quickly. You'll see further down the way when I start to uh, apply it that it um, it actually <laughs> starts to dry and I and and it sticks to my finger and it, it actually comes off the skewer. Um, the armatures of tin foil are actually um, very in its condensed form very tough but actually quite easy to poke a hole through and I'm just using a wooden skewer so you can see that it's you know it's soft enough to do that but it holds the shape of the bead really well. Now jewelers you probably do this um, a different way but when poking through you want to make sure that um, because it's it's well at this moment I have left it a little uh, left it to um, to the air a little bit so it actually stiffened up a wee bit and there were a little bit of cracks so I had to um, basically manipulate it some more but um, I don't know at what point um, jewelers actually poke their holes through it whether it's at you know um, the raw state and then they put it in the oven or whether it's after it's cooked and then they drill a hole through it but here I'm making sure that um, I, there's no cracks and, and things and even you know even if there is cracks when you start applying the uh, quick and thick to it it will fill the, the cracks up a little bit I just wanted it to be a little bit um, smoother I know it looks like I'm globbing it on but um, again I left my quick and thick uh, for a while open to the air and it's starting <laughs> to, already starting to dry watch look it's gonna stick to my finger it's just crazy it sticks to my finger and it just pulls it right off it's there's you know you really can't make any uh, mistakes with this not when you're globbing that stuff on now when you cover it in it completely it will somewhat level out like it's not going to end up being all clumpy and and lumpy on your bead because um you'll see um what i did is i'm just this is hilarious i'm just trying to make sure and not pull it off the skewer but yeah the lumps and bumps tend to level out a little bit and um, i don't know if you can see it um here in this picture probably not but when you look at the blue bead that I'll show you in a few minutes um, I use the same method and it's just fine right so when you have to let it rest on something this is really not the optimal stand um, but I made a I made a stand out of tin foil and I left it there it's almost like a what do you call it, chopstick holders but um, you don't necessarily want it to um, fall over onto your surface because quick and thick not only does it set really quickly it will adhere to a lot of different surfaces and it it almost adhered to uh, my plastic table so now I, I put it in the stand to let it dry and I'll probably let it dry for a good oh I'd say another hour or so I'm not going to be resing it until the following day but by that time it'll be all leveled out and beautiful and um, you can see that with the blue one right this I haven't resin that yet so um, I'll show you the end results in another video following after I've applied the art resin and um, there you have it a bead that doesn't need to be baked in an oven follow us subscribe, leave a constructive comment. Until next time, see ya.